We have a circular loop which carries a current I and the goal is to calculate the magnetic field at the center. And guess what? I'm going to use the same formula that I've been using for quite a few episodes now. The magnetic field due to a straight wire, a finite straight wire, which is mu naught divided by 4 pi times I divided by A into sine alpha plus sine beta. And if you're not familiar with this formula, please, please, please pause me right now. Go back, watch all those episodes and come back over here because it's not going to make any sense to you. Okay? I'm not going to draw this again. I don't want to clutter my diagrams over, now, over here right now. Anyways, I'm going to use this. Now at first you might say, this only works for a straight wire. How can I use that over here? This is bent. It's a curve. It's a circular loop. Well, we can actually use that by using differential approximation. And the approximation that I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to assume that the circular loop is actually made of tiny, tiny straight wires. So I'm going to assume that there's a straight wire over here, and then there's a straight wire here, and there's a wire here, and there's a wire here, and all these are straight wires. And if you make these lengths arbitrarily small, then the wires eventually add up and become a circular loop. So do you see this problem is sort of similar to the problem we saw with the square loop where we had four segments, we just have infinite segments. But we're not scared of infinity because we can integrate. Let's, let, let's get down to it. All right, so here is a segment that I'm going to be concentrating on, okay? The length of that segment is extremely small. It's a differential length. So the first step is going to be to draw a straight line from here to here, call this angle, call this distance as, this distance is R. And then to use the formula, I have to draw two extreme lines. Okay, so I have to draw lines from here to here, dotted lines from here to here, and from here to here. Okay. Now here's a simple question. If the, the if this length, the length of the segment is extremely small, what do you reckon with, what do you think about these angles? What do you say about these angles? Are they big or are they small? Well, if you said they are small, very good. They have to be, right? And I'm gonna assume both of these angles should be exactly the same. Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my current element in such a way, I mean, I'm gonna take a section of my wire in such a way that it extends to exactly the same length above and below. <coughs> Keep this in mind that this is a differential length. That is, that is not real. That's, that length doesn't really exist. It's not a physical thing. Physically, it's just a point. It's a mathematical entity, okay? So I can ex make them mathematically extend to the same length on either sides of this white line. And so the angle will be exactly the same, all right? And therefore, the very tiny magnetic field produced by this current carrying section, that tiny magnetic field dB, at the center, just magnitude, because we can work out the direction separately, is mu naught by 4 pi i divided by a times sine of this angle theta plus sine of this angle theta. That's alpha and beta, right? So this is sine of d theta plus sine of d theta, which is just two times sine of d theta, okay? So this gives you mu naught by i divided by a, and you get two times sine of d theta, but that two, that two, I'm gonna cancel with this four, I'm gonna get two pi here. Okay, I hope you could follow me. All right, and now we're gonna use this approximation that when angle is very small, it, uh, if the angle is very small, then sine of that angle is just becomes that angle. So this can be approximated to be just d theta. Very nicely, that approximation is going to work because this d theta is actually a differential length. So we can now write db as mu naught divided by 2 pi times i divided by a, and a is actually the radius here, okay? Let me pull that down over here, radius, times d theta. So there we have it, that's our differential magnetic field. And let's get the direction. The direction is going to be, use your right hand rule, or you can use dl cross r, dl is this way and r is towards the right if you do a dl cross r then that dl cross r is going to be clockwise and if you use your right hand rule now that points into the screen okay so let me get rid of all those extra stuff all right so so the magnetic field is into the screen it's going to be into the screen here 
And I hope you agree with me and you can convince yourself that regardless of where you take this current carrying small elemental section of the loop, the magnetic field will always point into the loop, into the board. And uh, that's going to be very useful for us because that's going to make everything easy. So let's, let's calculate the integral now. So the magnetic field, total magnetic field is going to be the integral of mu naught by 2 pi i by r d theta. And where should I integrate from? Well, I want to integrate all the way from zero. So d theta equal to zero. And I want, so basically theta equal to zero, I mean. I want the theta to go all the way from zero, all the way over here. See, you, I want it to go all the way over here. Because when my angle d theta extends all the way here, remember d theta is extending on either sides. My wire, my wire, this, this thing gets extended on either sides, so you can think of it that way. And as it extends on either sides, it'll extend on this side as well. So I don't have to go, I don't have to go 360 degrees, I just have to go 180 degrees. So I just have to go pi. I hope that made sense to you. Huh? Okay, so. Yeah, whatever. And therefore, this is going to be now mu naught divided by 2 pi into i divided by r into the integral of d theta, which is just pi minus 0. Uh, integral of d theta is theta, and I substitute it and get pi minus 0. And that gives us mu naught. Wait, 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 wait one second. What happened? Yeah, everything is fine. Yeah. Mu naught i divided by this pi cancels you get 2r perfect that's what we get that's exactly the answer right and so do you see how elegant this formula is this one single formula which i derived was useful for so many cases even for cases where the wire was not straight huh? all right okay so i'm going to see you next time stay tuned